Hi folks, welcome to today's lesson. We'll be looking at the sum and product of roots. This is the fifth video in the series of quadratic polynomials and the parabola. Um, I'm going to start by looking at factorising um, the quadratic e equations, uh, looking at the product and sum method. Um, I've put here that when solving by factorising it, that we recognise that there is a relationship with the product and sum. Let's, for example, look at, um, let's say, the equation x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. Okay, now the long way that we would have done when you first learned about this stuff was, or well, one of the methods, should I say, is looking at the product and sum method. Okay, or the P and S method. Where we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give, well in this case, 2. And looking for two numbers that add together to give 3. So if we look at this particular question, we'd probably say, well, 2 and 1 would be those two numbers because 2 times 1 is 2 and 2 plus 1 is 3. So we can recognize that there is certainly a relationship with the product, which is the first one, and the sum of, well, these are our two roots, aren't they? Because this is what we would go into my equation, x uh, plus 2 x plus 1 equals 0 and then we'd solve it to get x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 1. Okay, but that's looking to be my roots or something to along the lines of my roots. So there's a particular relationship with the roots of your equation and product and sum. So where am I going with this? Well, we're going looking at, looking at a um, another formula, I guess. Now, this is something that you probably don't have to remember too much is exactly as it writes. It is important, however, to know how to... How to answer the questions I guess. Um, but that equation we look at is x squared minus, now this is going to sound a bit weird to start off with, alpha plus beta x plus alpha beta equals zero. Now I know what you're saying, what on earth is that alpha plus beta and alpha beta? Okay, but they look like angles and that's what we used to use alpha and beta for. What's going on here? Well, alpha and beta Okay, we let those two letters represent the roots of an equation. Okay, the roots of an equation. For example, if we look at the roots of this equation above, x equals minus 2 and x equals negative 1, you'll notice that if I put those two here, so if I put in brackets minus 2 minus 1, and if I put them here, minus 2 times negative 1, now, it makes the minus 3x, well, minus and a minus makes a positive 3x. Well, that's what we've got up there. And negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. That's what we've got there. Okay, it works out. Okay, so it just talks about the roots of my equation where the sum is the middle term. And for a, I guess, a non, sorry, a monotonic, which means there's only a 1 from the x squared, okay, it'd be, the product would be the last two times together. Okay, so look, that's very basic understanding of what alpha and beta are and the fact that they represent the roots of an equation where the middle term is the sum of the two roots and the last term is the multiplication of the two roots. Um, but what do we need to know? Okay, how does this work into what we're doing in class? Okay, so what do we need to know? Well, we need to know the two following things. Okay, so I might put here what we need to know. Okay, well they gave me two factors that we need to know. First of all, the sum of my two roots, alpha plus beta. There is a way to find that, apart from just looking at your equation, there's a little formula. That little formula is negative b over a. The other one is for the product of my two roots, alpha and beta, that is C on A. Now these are the two pieces of information that you need to remember, that you need to learn off by heart. Um, it will certainly be in the HSC, but it will certainly be in your preliminary stuff as well. Now remembering that our quadratic equation, I guess, um, is in the form of AX squared plus BX plus C equals 0. Okay, or Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. Where the A is that number in front of the x squared, the b is the number in front of the x, and the c is that last number there. So if we look back at that last question where we had 
um, x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. Okay. Um, if I wanted to find out what alpha and beta was, okay, well, we know it was negative 3 from there before, but let's use a formula. So alpha plus beta equals negative b over a, which equals negative 3 over 1, which equals negative 3. And alpha beta equals c over a, which in this case is equal to 2 over 1, which equals 2, which we know that to be true as well because it was in the form of that number there was alpha beta. Um, so they're the two pieces of information you need to remember. Okay, that's really important, really important, those two things. You get lots of different styles of questions from those two formulas that you need to remember. I will cover, uh, I guess, a variety of different questions now. Um, however, I will go through, I guess, the very basic ones and the most common, commonly asked questions. Um, so let's have a look at some examples of what they might ask you to do. Um, let's say, given the equation um, x squared plus 4x minus 2 equals 0, find um, alpha plus beta, alpha beta, now there are two, thing, two things we've just gone through, but they ask you for a couple more challenging ones. For example, it could be 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta. It could be um, alpha squared plus beta squared. Okay, there are lots of different varieties of things that they can ask you. So let's have a look at this. Well, we know that alpha plus beta is equal to um, minus b over a. Okay, we just looked at that formula. That formula you need to memorize. Okay, you need to remember that off by heart. In this case, we've got negative 4 over 1 because our b equals the 4, our a equals the 1. Okay, which is just equal to negative 4. Got my value for alpha plus beta. Okay, ticks away. The next one is alpha beta, which we know the formula, again, you need to memorize that one, is C on A. So in this case, well, C equals negative 2. So I've got negative 2 over our A, which is simply equaling to negative 2. Okay, got my second mark. So they're the very two basic ones that they'll ask you. You need to, as I said, memorize those formulas to be able to answer those questions. But they start chucking in some more challenging types of questions. Okay. They can ask you things, for example, um, 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta. Now, I know what you're going to say. Well, what's the formula for 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta? And there is none. Okay, that's where this gets a little bit tricky. What we can do, though, we can try to create or change, manipulate that question to make something like one of the two above. Okay, somehow I want to change this question they've given me to incorporating something with alpha plus beta and alpha beta because I know how to find those. So, for example, let's find a common denominator. A common denominator, in this case, would be alpha beta which would be nice because we know what alpha beta is, it equals to negative 2. But how do I do that? Well, we can look at this and say, well, I'm going to times alpha by beta times the top by beta, remember? And normal fraction works. Whatever you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. So in that case, we've got 1 times beta is just beta. Then I times beta by alpha to make the alpha beta, so times the top by alpha. So what's 1 times alpha? Well, that's just plus alpha. So what I've actually got here is alpha plus beta all over alpha beta. So what I've done, I've manipulated that question, because it looked weird to start off with, to something that I am now familiar with. Okay, We know that alpha plus beta is minus b over a, which is minus 4. So I can just replace it. I know that alpha beta is negative 2. We found that in the second question. Negative 4 divided by negative 2. Well, 2 negatives make a positive. 4 divided by 2 is just 2. Got my answer. I'm done. Wasn't particularly easy, but you can see how the first two allowed me to answer the third one. Okay, the next one is alpha plus beta squared. Now, again, this is a bit more challenging. Okay. Um, of course, I could try to try to manipulate this somehow to make these two things. There are lots of different ways that I could do this. Um, but I'm looking at this going, well, what about if I just do this? Alpha plus beta, and I just square it. Couldn't that just work? It comes close. It does come close, in fact. Okay, let's just expand this to see what it would actually look like, though, if it would make this. So you could either do the perfect square, or if you want to write it out like 
alpha plus beta times alpha plus beta and do it the long way you can. I'm going to do the short method. I'm going to square the first. I'll get my alpha squared. Okay, awesome. I'm going to times these two things together and double it. So I get 2 alpha beta. That's a bit of a problem. Don't really have that there. Square the last plus beta squared. Okay, well, I've got that. So this is nearly something that I want to have. Nearly. Because what this now creates, it creates my alpha squared plus beta squared. That's what the question asked me. But unfortunately, I've got this extra 2 alpha beta tacked onto my answer. So if I just do alpha plus beta, which in this case is negative 4, and if I just square it, that's going to give me too much. Okay, It gives me that alpha plus beta squared, but it also gives me an extra plus 2 alpha beta. Hopefully your mind is starting to tick away thinking, well, if we know that alpha plus beta is negative 4, if I just do negative 4 squared, which gives me 16, knowing, however, that it's too much by that amount, well, couldn't I just take 2 alpha beta away from 16? Well, 2 alpha beta would be 2 lots of negative 2, which is negative 4. So, let's just get rid of that. Okay, so let's do that. So let's do 16. Oops, sorry about that. I've got the wrong thing there. So let's do um, 16, take away, take away 4, which lands me with 20, which is my answer, which is now correct. That, my friends, is a pretty tough question. Okay, that, that one's pretty tough. But they can do lots of different ones. But I guess what you need to look for with those more challenging questions is can you somehow make something with an alpha plus beta in it? Can you somehow make something with an alpha beta in it? Somehow make that or something that consists of those two things and you'll be able to substitute your answers into there. Okay, they do get tough. Um, I'm not going to say that they don't because they certainly do. Um, all right. Let's have a look at one more question like that style. 